<clears throat> All right, Sam. So I just watched your interview. You did a great job. Um, I one little part that I just uh, wanted to uh, to go over with you really quickly. You did fine on, not a problem. But just uh, wanted to give you a little bit of a, a um, um, refresher on <clears throat> the mass spectra itself, where you have the the intensity versus the mass over charge, right? Intensity versus mass. First of all, those two axes, right? You understand those axes well. One is intensity, meaning, or sorry, frequency, as you're saying, intensity, same thing, how often that mass actually hits the detectors, all right, how often those masses are hitting the detectors at that specific point when that spectra was collected. The bottom axis, the x-axis, is um, the mass of the different um, fragments that are hitting the, the, the detector, right? So let's run through some scenarios. If the 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 um, molecule, if the molecule didn't break up at all, it would just there would just be one peak, one peak, right? And the mass of that peak would be very difficult for it would be impossible for the computer to know what it is because there's you know hundreds of thousands of different possible masses that would have or molecules that would have that mass, right? As the fragmentation occurs, then you can begin to see the little parts that came off of the, uh, the largest mass. Now, the largest mass is always assumed to be the whole molecule because some, you, know, you keep the settings such that not all of the molecules fragment. You want some of the molecules to not fragment so that you can get what we call the parent mass. So you can get the parent mass that way. So you have the highest mass being the parent mass, and then all the other fragments are um, below it. Now, uh, <clears throat> the reason why that that specific figure is nice to have on your on your uh, presentation there is because uh, <clears throat> if somebody says, "How do you know it's it's indole?" or "How do you know it's it's parallel and nitrile?" that sort of thing, you can say, "Well, this is what the spectra looks like," and you see. This is the parent mass, the whole molecule. And then here's another mass. And what does this mass represent? Oh, this mass represents the cyano group broken off. Well, why would there be a cyano group missing if it was, if it was just indole? It is probably uh, para, ortho, or meta, toluene nitrile because the cyano group actually came off, right? So what that mass spectra is kind of um, supporting is the fact that mm, it's probably not just Indole, it looks like it could be actually uh, a derivative of indole, you know, para, meta, or ortho, toluene nitrile coming off. All right? So that's what that uh, spectra is good for. The computer has spectra in the database for para, ortho, meta, uh, and uh, indole, right? All those four different chemicals in the database. And when it looks at the fragmentation pattern, it finds out which one it looks most similar to. And so indole will fragment just slightly different than ortho, and which will fragment slightly different than meta, and so forth. And it's choosing the one that has the best overlap. Uh, you know, the database is from people taking these chemicals, running them, and then taking the spectra, storing them in the database, and uh, that, that database is there. Now, yeah, so that's, what, that's why that's important to have there. It kind of can convince the judges that it's not just indole. It's probably one of the nitro, uh, nitro toluol uh, derivatives. There. The second thing, uh, just a quick overview of how the mass spectro or sorry, the, the gas chromatography mass spectrometer works, GCMS. You have two kind of things going on there. Okay. The first thing that happens is, like you said, the fiber is placed into the the um, inlet, and the inlet is like at you know 100 and or no, it's like 200 degrees Celsius, really hot. So all of the volatile compounds that were collected by the spemi fall off into that little space there. And then there's helium that's being purged through the system all the time, and so all those molecules go down the column. Uh, riding along the helium gas, right? As they ride along the helium gas in through this thin column, they bounce along the walls, 
all these molecules. Okay, the molecules bounce along the walls, interact with the 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 what we call the stationary phase, the material that's on the inside coat of the walls, and the molecules that stick a lot to the walls take a long time to come out. The molecules that move, don't stick to the walls, they stay with the helium better, then they move out faster. And so that's how you get different molecules to come out at different times, because the ones that stick to the walls go slower, the ones that go through with the helium go through fast. All right, that's the gas chromatography part. A gentleman who was saying he was putting powder in there, no, you never put powder in a gas chromatography ever. I don't know, he must have been confused. He also said something about an NMR. You don't have any NMR on your your um, uh, board there. You're, we didn't use NMR. So you, you know, if somebody says, "Oh, where's the NMR?" or something like that, you say, "Well, we didn't use any NMR. What we used is uh, GC gas chromatography mass spectrometry." So the gas chromatography part, I explained that. Now, after it comes out at the end of the column, then it runs into uh, the it, well, it goes into the mass spectrometer, and in the mass spectrometer, that's where the fragmentation actually begins to occur, and the 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 molecule is just blasted, bursts up into a bunch of pieces, and then all those fragments fly and hit the detector, based on where their mass is. They hit the detector in different locations, and then you get that spectrum. All right, so you put the be me in the inlet, the gas or the the volatile compounds are released. They all move down the the, lar the long column, gas chromatography column, and they all spit out into the mass spectrometer. They're fragmented, and then they all hit the, uh, the detector based on the fragmentation pattern. All right, you're doing great. It was fun to hear you. I think you're going to do an outstanding job. All right, love you. Say hi to mom. Hi, mom. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>